Another video, another chance to indulge ourselves in some vengeance. That's right, we're still doing this. And this is actually another request by one of the wonderful Subscribestar bros. Dude's been waiting a long time for this, but hopefully the wait was worth it. Let's talk about some fucking giant robots. That's right, Vodums, also known as Armored Trooper Vodums. Now this is a very interesting beast to put it lightly. Vodums is the 1983 anime created by Ryosuke Takahashi, and the basic premise is... Okay, this is gonna be a tad complicated, just don't worry. Essentially, you have a science fiction setting taking place in what's known as the Astragius Galaxy. It's a distant future, and the series begins right as a massive war between two factions is tapering off. You have the Gilgamesh and Balorant nations, who've been fighting for over a hundred years, and hit the galaxy hard in the aftermath. Nobody even really remembers why the war started, it's that bad. The main way the war was fought was with armored troopers, big-ass power suits piloted by single soldiers. And while they are devastating, they're also glass cannons, with very thin armor and being highly flammable thanks to the fluid used in the artificial muscle. So while they're used as the main way to fight during the war, it's well known that armored trooper pilots were essentially fodder with zero chance at survival. In fact, their nickname is Bottoms, since they have the lowest chance of survival of any soldier. You got a whole army of Bottoms waiting to take the hot load the others are too scared of. And yes, the pronunciation of Vadams is intentional, it's supposed to be a dark pun. Well, the protagonist of the story is Chiriko Kuvi, a mysterious Special Forces AT pilot transferred to a new unit in the Gilgamesh Confederation. One day, as he's performing a mission with his new comrades, he's betrayed and left to die. His new unit secretly betraying Gilgamesh and stealing military secrets for Balorant. Chiriko is captured and tortured by Gilgamesh, fully pinned as the Fall Guy, and forced to go on the run, hunted by Gilgamesh and Balorant both as he tries to uncover a shadowy conspiracy, which seems to involve a mysterious woman he stumbled upon during the failed operation. Now, so far I've only talked about the original anime, but Vodums actually ended up being a pretty decent-sized franchise, with a number of spin-offs and OVAs that further fleshed out the setting, the most famous of which being Armor Hunter Mellowlink, since that took on a life of its own and actually ended up being a lot of people's gateway into Vodums. But there's a number of prequels and side stories that take place at the same time as the anime, and to this day you can find references to Vodums in a number of things. It's shown up in over five of the Super Robot War games. I even talk about the actual licensed games it got. There's even a dedicated tabletop made by fucking Mike Pondsmith, the creator of Cyberpunk 2020. That's not a joke. He was such a fan of the anime that he pushed to get the rights to make the tabletop. Not only that, but it also inspired another tabletop game, Heavy Gear, which turned into its own franchise, even though that was essentially an act of desperation after Activision lost the rights to Mech Warrior. You guys get the point. This is a pretty big world, and it still makes Waves a full 40 years since its creation. Now, it hasn't had the staying power of something like Gundam, which funny enough Kunio Okawara also did design concepts for. Yeah, he did both Gundam and Vodums. But Vodums has a very loyal fanbase for a reason. There's sort of a weird interpretation going around that the mecha genre died at one point. Or even weirder, that Evangelion served as the deconstruction to the genre, bringing in grim and psychological elements to a genre that was too light-hearted. Or even weirder, claiming that the focus on characters and their struggles was somehow unique to it. Now, not only is this not a deconstruction whatsoever, but it makes me genuinely question where this idea started going around. Now, that isn't to say Evangelion is bad, not by any means. I personally am not a big fan of it, but... It's not bad, I'm just saying that the ideas it discusses are not unique to that series. Not even for the time it came out. There were grim mecha a full decade before. Even the original Mobile Suit Gundam focused on the consequences of war and showed things such as PTSD and the mass murder of civilians. Of course, Ava includes a lot of mystical and abstract elements to it, getting full-blown psychedelic and more metaphorical than literal at points, and of Evangelion, to put it simply. But this, once again, isn't really something that falls into deconstruction. And really, Vodums ends up being substantially more grim in a lot of ways. Vodums is all about human nature and sort of the endless cycle of war. Despite the galaxy getting its shit kicked in after over a century of brutal war, the conspiracy Cherico fights to uncover drags everything right back to where it started. The enemy they fight isn't aliens or some sort of master race. 
Okay, but I will have to talk about that, though. It's other humans. It's war. And every side does unspeakable things simply because they can. Even Cherico himself isn't really a hero. The dude is vicious, to say the least. Extremely cold-blooded and quick to gun after anyone that wrongs him. Dude is even willing to murder third parties like cops or unaware soldiers simply because they get in the way of him and a target. Of course, as the series goes on, he starts to chill out, mainly thanks to the mysterious woman he finds, Fiona. Thanks to her and a slowly growing main cast, Jericho sort of rediscovers his humanity and changes his reason for fighting, from vengeance and survival to a higher purpose. Now, in comparison to something like a Gundam or a Getter Robo, the technology in Bottoms is extremely low-tech. In fact, some people refer to it as a hard science fiction series, meaning it takes steps to be more grounded instead of a very stylish and rule-of-cool deal. You even see this in the way that Bottoms themselves work. They're not just extremely fragile, but they're also very bulky and unwieldy. Pilots don't have windows. They have cameras they have to rely on for their surroundings. And if those break, you're fucked and stuck going blind until they get fixed. They're also not very maneuverable, especially compared to a mobile suit or an Ava unit. In fact, some moments reminded me of Blue Gender sometimes, where those are literally just bulky-ass power suits that just barely give pilots a better chance at staying alive than just going on their feet. Blue Gender is a good one too, by the way. It's pretty killer. Still, Vodums works hard to make the setting feel like a believable example of how a mecha suit would work, essentially making them similar to a flamethrower unit. Ab absolutely devastating until the wrong piece of machinery gets hit. Then it's just a big metal coffin, or even worse, a time bomb. Now, the conspiracy the story hints at constantly is pretty convoluted, I will admit, so much so that it would sound weird to talk about without context. You get a full 52 episodes of anime to explore every crevice, but even then there's details that are only revealed in the OVAs. All you have to know is that it goes beyond space politics. Past a certain point, it dips into some magic bullshit. No, I'm not kidding, and this is actually where we dip into territory I sorta don't like about Vodums. The actual mecha side of it is fantastic. The battles are gritty, and learning about the motivations of both empires is fascinating, especially when the Hundred Year War reignites, which is when shit goes completely bananas. It's so crazy, even Armor Hunter treats it as a major plot point. But there's a twist with Chirico I really don't care for, at least how they handle it, and even then only sometimes. And it does make me sad to see how much it influences the rest of the series. I'll put up a spoiler warning here, so please watch Armored Trooper Vodums before going any further. Despite my complaints, it really is a fantastic anime, but the twist will divide people. Not even gonna lie. <laughs> So, Chirico is built up to be a complete anomaly. Nobody really knows where he came from. He was just some 18-year-old kid that showed up one day, and the bad guys thought they could use him like fodder and quickly get rid of him when the job was over. But Chirico surprises everyone by just being a fucking killing machine. The dude just doesn't die, and he does not hesitate. Turns out, he's an experienced soldier ever since childhood, even being a veteran of what's known as the Red Shoulder Battalion, which were Gilgamesh's highest level killers. The guy is relentless and his backstory only reinforces that the dude was simply the worst possible guy to fuck with. And then you get that other twist. So, Chirico isn't just an ultimate badass. He's also not really even human. No, seriously. His blue hair isn't just a stylistic thing. He's what's known as a perfect soldier, a genetically engineered being created for war. He can heal fast, very fast, able to survive mortal wounds and be completely ready to fight just a few days later. Not only that, but he's also a very special perfect soldier. He's one of the last of a race known as the Overmen, which are basically gods like actually worshipped in the setting level. And the conspiracy involves the big bad guy grooming Chirico to ascend to become God. Not a God, just full-blown God. And this is where we dip into that territory I talked about. I really like Chirico as the protagonist. The guy is a complicated figure to say the least. He's brutal to his enemies, but not needlessly cruel to people. It's just he gets so focused on revenge that he ends up being a walking disaster. Entire planets end up as wastelands due to the shit he brings to town. Some out of a grudge, and others simply because he's a hunted man who can't get away from his pursuers. It grinds on him, mentally, and he does feel guilty for the innocent people dragged into the war. But what made all of this interesting to me is the fact that Chirico is a man. He was a human being that got out of situations purely based on his own skills, 
skills and abilities to squeak out whatever small victory he could. I especially liked the fact he was a total unknown to the conspirators. The fact he survived and caused as much damage as he did was a legitimate shock to both empires. He was just some kid they thought they could use, but all of a sudden he's killing scores of their guys and hunting after the truth. But with him being a godlike being, all of a sudden, this becomes a lot less special. Now it's not a big deal that he could survive so many battles in an AT suit. The thing they kept referencing kills its pilots constantly. It's just common sense that the genetically engineered guy with the healing factor could survive so many fights. That's not to say it completely ruins the series. The original anime keeps it light enough to be tolerable, and it at least fits with what it's going for. The ending especially has a pretty damn good twist to it. It's when you watch the OVAs where you get into the really bullshit moments. Dude survives a fucking space station falling on him in Shining Heresy. It gets to be a little too much at points. Shining Heresy never happened. It never happened. But another reason I didn't really enjoy the twist that much is because of Chirico's relationship with Fiona. And I have no idea if I'm pronouncing it right. She has an I there, so I'm just calling her Fiona, fuck you. Fiona is the artificial human created by Gilgamesh that Chirico and his units attempt to steal during the opening mission. She is a prototype of a perfect soldier, the first one as far as most of the cast is aware, and she is Chirico's main love interest in the series. At first, she's a completely emotionless killer, enhanced to being completely superhuman, but her time with Chirico allows her to become more human, and their bond drives a lot of events in the story. This is another reason why I don't really enjoy the Overman twist with him. Fiona learns how to show emotion and become a human being. But funny enough, that's due to the rest of the cast and Jericho's friends, and their connections with the two. Jericho himself still struggles with his humanity, so it's sort of a Blade Runner deal. The artificial woman is more human than the actual man, but with him being an overman, he's now just sort of the same entity as Fiona, an inhuman creation that's simply rebelling against their programming. That by itself can be compelling, but I don't know, I guess I just enjoy the idea that Jericho himself is human and Fiona grows to love him, despite herself being a different organism. Now, I will say the relationship is done well. The two go from adversaries to reluctant comrades, and eventually their connection gets deeper as the stakes get higher. The ending of the anime ends up being pretty bittersweet, but it's as close to a happy ending that these two characters could possibly get. Shining Heresy never happened. The timeline itself doesn't even end with the anime. One of the OVAs takes place about 30 years later, and you see what happened to the rest of the cast. It's a nice send-off that shows no matter how grim and brutal the setting can get, there's still possibilities to live a decent life. Now, the actual animation of Autumns is that classic 80s hand-drawn. Sunrise handled the anime, and you can practically smell the detail coming off each of the mechs. The animation itself is damn smooth, and the fight scenes in particular have loads of weight to them. These are bulkier, heavier mechs than a Gundam, and you feel that with every fight. If you ever wanted a Battletech anime, this is as close to the style as you would want. Ignoring Macross, but shut up. The point is that the mechs and bottoms feel much more like tanks on legs than a giant Iron Man suit. They're stacked with missiles, heavy machine guns, and the only real hand-to-hand -hand combat they're capable of is just beating the shit out of each other. Now, there are variations of mech suits, like different models or modifications made by their pilots, so it's not like you see the exact same robots with no differences between them, but there's none that ever break the rule of heavy and unreliable. Even the bad guys use AT suits that only just work better than the ones the jobbers get. The things are walking death traps, and the series never stops reminding you of it. Hell, you would be a lot smarter just being a pilot for a starship instead of a mech suit, and you do get a variety of fights, from mech battles to shootouts to dogfights. There's always something they're trying in order to make it all still feel fresh. Now, while the story is gritty, I wouldn't say it's very gory or violent. There's a lot more tell-don't-show in regards to the violence and bottoms. You hear stories of massacred innocents, of mutilated corpses, and grisly death, but you never actually see it, so don't go in expecting Genocyber or, funny enough, Evangelion. Other than that, you mainly get people only really getting shot without much blood, or mechs exploding into fireballs, which, while violent, is not gory. It's more grim in concept than in actual content. Nevertheless, Bottoms is a very badass series. While it's not perfect, it's definitely a prime example of classic 80s anime Kino. The rest of the cast are all 80s anime archetypes with bad guys that are about as subtle as a brick to the skull, and the plucky tomboy girl with big hair. You can definitely feel the soul of when it came out. I highly recommend you guys check out Bottoms, especially if you're a fan of the mecha genre. It's one of the better examples that tries to ground the technology and concepts to at least be kind of believable. Mainly, 
and the tanks on legs idea for the AT suits. The more fantastical elements will be hit and miss with some people, especially if you check out the OVAs, but it's just such a cool universe that I'm confident enough in saying it doesn't ruin anything for me personally. Also, check out Armor Hunter. That's one of the better spin-offs, and it's pretty fucking killer. A lot of people just like watching that and don't even have any clue it's tied to bottoms. I may even do a whole dedicated video on that, since it pretty much works to be its own thing, so it's more of a companion piece that you can watch alone, rather than needing the full context of the setting. Though it does help. Regardless, Vodums is a ton of fun. It's a serious gem that's passed through the test of time with flying colors. Hell, with all the anime that's been getting remakes recently, why not give Vodums some love? One of the OVAs came out not too long ago, maybe in like 2010? It's not a completely dead franchise, it's just kinda gone quiet. And hell, with Gundam putting out new stuff and reminding everyone that Mecha is still pretty killer, I mean, god, those aerial gunplas are flying off the shelves. I think Vodums could absolutely get some love in the modern day. We already got a remake of Bastard and Urusei Yatsura, both both of those have been pretty great. That 80s style of anime is still in demand, since the source material itself is still good, regardless of the time period, and might even be appreciated more now. Maybe one day we can see these bulky ass tanks remade, but who knows. It's still a fun as fuck anime, and you guys really should watch this. In the end, I hope you check out this franchise, it's really something special. Until next time, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys. Hey loser, do you want a shirt? Do you want a t-shirt? I have shirts now. Look in, look in the description for a link to a t-shirt you can buy. If you don't buy the t-shirt, I'll kill your family. If you don't buy the t-shirt, I'll poison your dog. If you don't buy the t-shirt, you're gonna be the only person in town that does not have a t-shirt. Everyone's gonna look at you funny. There's gonna be social consequences to not having one of these t-shirts. I'm now making express threats of violence against you. If you do not buy my t-shirt, I will call the police, tell them how they're not, you know, you're not buying my shirt. They're gonna plant crack in your house, and they're gonna arrest you and then beat you up in a jail cell. Buy my shirt.